Hello learners, myself Simran from Team Cloud EML and I welcome you back to our YouTube channel. So today in this video, we are going to, st we are going to start with the aptitude training session number 3 and this is by the company Deloitte. Like we have selected certain questions out of the aptitude round of the Deloitte company and we are going to uh, solve these questions with you. Okay, so let's begin. So this is the first question, which is of the quantitative aptitude type. Let's read out the question first. A sum of money at simple interest amounts to rupees 815 in three years and to rupees 854 in four years. Then the sum is. So we all know that uh, when we take up some amount from the bank as loan, then we need to uh, pay the, uh, the amount of the loan along with certain simple interest. Okay, So the total sum is given to be 815. This 815 is along with the simple interest, the total sum that we are paying in return to the bank. And this amount is in three years. And, sim and similarly, it is amount is uh, 854 in four years, which means the original amount that we have taken from the bank along with the simple interest. So this sum is nothing but uh, the amount is nothing but 855 in 3 years and 854 in 4 years. Then we need to find the original amount that we had taken up from the bank. So the sum is and we need to choose the correct answer from these four. Okay, so let's solve this question. Let's see what all we have been given. So the amount, amount in three years is rupees 815, 815 and similarly amount in four years is 854, okay and uh, this is uh, all that we have been given and we need to find out the principal amount, okay, which is nothing but the sum. Principal amount is the amount that we have originally taken from the bank. So um, the formula for finding the principal amount is that the total amount, okay, the total amount that we have to pay to the bank is always equal to the principal amount plus the simple interest, okay. Because to the bank, we pay the principal amount. Principal amount is the amount that we have taken from the bank. And simple interest is the interest that we pay to the bank. So this is the formula. So in our case, we need to find the principal amount, correct? The original amount that we have been taken from the bank. So first, let's find out uh, the difference between amount 4 and amount 3. So the difference between amount 4 and amount 3 will be nothing but the uh, simple interest amount for one year. Why? Because amount 4 is the amount for four years. Right? And amount 3 is the amount for 3 years. So when we subtract, when we subtract them, we get the amount for 1 year. Because simple interest, we pay interest yearly. Okay. So whatever the difference will be, it will be the uh, simple interest that we have paid for a single year. Correct. So amount 4 minus amount 3. This will be nothing but 4 into uh, sorry, 854, 854 minus 815. It's 854 minus 815, which is nothing but 39. Okay, see 14 minus 5 will be 19, oh, sorry, 9, and uh, 4 minus 1 will be 39, it will be 3. So the simple interest for one year is 30, uh, 39 rupees. Okay, after that, we know it for one year. So let's find it for three years. Okay. So for three years, the uh, simple interest, let's say SI uh, for three years will be nothing but 3 into 39, correct? Because we had find the simple interest for one year. We found the simple interest for one year, which is rupees 39. So for three years, it will be 3 into 39, which will be, okay, 3 uh, three nines are 27, okay, three threes are nine plus two, 
which is nothing but 11. So 117 rupees is the amount of simple interest for 3 years. Now, let's find out the principal uh, amount. Now substitute this simple interest that we have found for 3 years and the amount of 3 years in this formula. Okay, so let's do it. Amount for 3 years is 815, correct? And this is the principal amount, whatever we, we have taken from the bank. And the simple interest for 3 years is 170. You can similarly do this for the uh, amount 4, okay? But we, we have chosen it to do it for amount 3. If you also do it for amount 4, you need to multiply this with 4 so that you get the simple interest for 4 years. Okay, and then you need to substitute both of these values in this formula. You will be getting the same answer. So now, what we will do is, we will keep principal amount at one side and then 815 minus 170. It will get subst uh, subtracted, okay? So, the answer that we get is 15 minus 7, which is 8. Then we have uh, 10 minus 1, which is 9. And this 7 minus 1, which will be 6. So, the principal amount is nothing but 698, which is our option number C, rupees 698. Okay, so, uh, you just need to keep in uh, mind this simple formula, which is amount equal principal plus simple interest. And this is just a common logic because we all know the procedure of banks. Whatever amount we take as the loan, which is the principal amount, and we need to pay back this principal amount along with the simple interest. And whatever we pay back to the bank is the total amount that we pay. So this is just a simple formula you need to keep in mind for this these types of questions. Okay, so now let's move ahead with the second question. Second question is of the type logical reasoning. So we have been given three statements and we need to find the relationship between these three statements. See, statement number one is apartments in the Riverdale Manor. Riverdale Manor is a, a place. Cost less than the apartments in the Gaslight Commons. Ga Gaslight Commons is also uh, the name of a place. Uh, statement B is apartments in the Livingston Gate cost more than the apartments in the Gaslight Commons. And the uh, statement C is of the three apartment buildings, the Livingston gate costs the most. Okay, so let's uh, first visualize this uh, question that we have been given. So the first is apartments in Riverdale Manor. So let's first uh, visualize Riverdale Manor. So let's say this is Riverdale Manor and uh, give it the name as A. Okay, then we have the Gaslight Common. This is the Gaslight Commons Apartments. And what our statement A says that apartments in Riverdale Manor cost less than the apartments in Gaslight Commons. Which means this is Riverdale Manor. This is Gaslight Commons. So these apartments cost less than the B apartments. So less than the B apartments, correct? So this was our first statement. Second statement says that apartments in the Livingston Gate. So now let's draw the Livingston Gate. So suppose this is the Livingston Gate, which is apartment C, okay? What the second statement says, apartments in the Livingston Gate cost more than the apartments in the Gaslight Commons. Gaslight Commons was our apartment B. Let's give name. See, this was the Gaslight Commons. Okay, uh, this was the Riverdale. And the third one is Livingston Gate. Livingston Gate. Okay, what it says is the apartment in the Livingston Gate cost more than Gaslight Commons. Okay, so this is more. And this third statement says that of the three apartment buildings, Livingston Gate costs the most. Which means that this Livingston Gate this Livingston gate costs the most, okay? So, uh, what we, uh, we have been given three statements and we had to find out what, whatever, uh, what relationship is there between the three apartments. 
third statement, uh, then we need to find out that if the first two statements are true, the third statement is. In the question, we have been given that the suppose the first two statements are true. That is, apartments in the Riverdale are less than the apartments in Gaslight Commons and the apartments in Living Livingston Gate are more than the Gaslight Commons. Which means that suppose, see, by this relationship we get that if A is less than B and B is less than C, correct? So we know the simple logic that if A is less than B and B is less than C, then A is obviously less than C, correct? So this means that C is the greatest of all, correct? Because it is also less than A and it is also less than B. Okay, so this is the reason that the third statement will all be, always be true when both of these above statements are true. So the answer will be true. Why? Because the third statement is that the Livingston gate costs the most. That means the Livingston gate cost is the highest. Okay, so if these two statements are true, that A is, uh, that A is less than B, B is less than C, then obviously A will be less than C. Correct. So this means that C is the highest of all. It costs the most of all. So that is the reason the third statement will always be true when both the above statements are true. So the answer will be A option which is true. So uh, this was the logical reasoning question. Next one is the verbal reasoning question wherein uh, you need to give the one word substitution for a cautionary advice. Okay. So uh, these are the four options wherein you need to find out that which option correctly uh, gives the substitution for this meaning a cautionary advice. Cautionary means something that uh, you should not do. Okay. When uh, a child is, uh, when the child goes on the road in between vehicles, so the parents uh, give him a caution that don't go over there, it is dangerous. So that is a cautionary advice. Correct. So let's see the meaning of all of these four options and let's choose the most appropriate option. So the first word is censor. Uh, censor is nothing but certain rules. Okay, Censor rules are uh, rules for uh, analyzing the correctness of something. Okay, then next we have the censor. Censor is used to sense some physical attributes like temperature sensors, speed sensors. Okay heat sensors. So that cannot be a cautionary advice. Then pressure. Pressure is a physical unit okay, that measures the amount of strength that has been applied. So that also cannot be a cautionary advice. Next we have warning. So warning, as we all know that warning is something that prevents us from doing something like a teacher gives us a warning, parents give, give us warning. So that the correct meaning of warning is uh, the, a cautionary advice. So, uh, from all these four options, warning is the appropriate option for a cautionary advice. So, the answer in our case will be D, warning. Okay, so when such questions come, don't get confused. Be clear about the meanings and choose the most appropriate option that you think. Okay, so this is the fourth question of quantitative aptitude. So, look at the uh, look at these series. 2, 6, 18 and 54. What number should come next? Okay, you have been given four options and from this you need to select what number will come next. So this is a logical reasoning question and you need to analyze this uh, number sequence. You need to find a pattern that has been followed while creating the sequence and you need to apply the same pattern to find out the next number. So uh, this is a question for you all. Do solve this question and comment down the solution in the comment box. Okay, so and we'll discuss the solution as well. So uh, do solve this question and put up the solution in the comment box. You just need to find out the pattern in the sequence and apply that pattern to the next number and find out that what number will come next. So do comment down the solution. So we saw three questions in this session of the company Deloitte and the first one was the aptitude, quantitative aptitude, then logical reasoning and verbal reasoning. So keep practicing similar type of questions to 
easily crack the aptitude round of Deloitte company. So thank you for watching this video and don't forget to comment down the solution for the fourth question. Do like, share the video and subscribe to our channel as we will be putting more and more company based aptitude questions. Company based aptitude questions. Thank you.